Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Pokepaint, the series where I create new Pokemon to inhabit a brand new and fan-made Pokemon region. I've got to say, it's good to be back. For those of you who are just joining us now, welcome. But for those of you who have been with us before, you may know that it's been a few months since I wrapped up my last season of Pokepaint. The season in question explored the Trapor region and the Caribbean-inspired Pokemon that called that region their home. But this time, as promised, we'll have a whole new region to explore, based on the southern U.S. state of Florida. This idea sprung into my head well over a year and a half ago, when I was still working on the very early stages of my last region. While I was sitting at a boring work conference that I didn't really want to be at, I sketched out a few doodles for a map and some early rote Pokemon based around what a Florida region might be like, and I thought it was such a good idea that it would make a great season of Pokepaint. And so, here we are now. Of course, since I've come up with that idea, I've had a number of new ideas for the region, including the map and some gyms, a story, and of course, the reason why you're all here now, some new Pokemon. These topics will, of course, be for another day, because there's only one good way to start out a new season of Pokepaint, and that is with, of course, the starters. There's no way around it. Making a starter trio is really hard. I mean, in the eyes of the Pokemon fans, even the official Pokemon companies only made a perfect trio, like, once or twice. There are a few things that go into making a good trio, besides the obvious fact that they're always a trio of grass, fire, and water type Pokemon that evolve twice into a middle and then final stage. And of course, making a good starter trio is subjective. No one will ever really agree on if a trio is perfect or not, but through digging through the existing official and some fan-made starter trios that are, in my opinion, successful, I've come up with three design rules, if you could call them that, that they all follow. The first is that all three of the Pokemon have distinct and separate personalities. Not only that, but they can always roughly fall into the same reoccurring categories. The bold one, which is the one with the outgoing, sometimes edgy personality, these are often the fire types. The calm one, which are often considered to be the more benign or boring ones, but personally this category consistently supports some of my favorite starters. And finally, the quirky one, which is of course the ones with the big personalities that are often relegated to the comic relief Pokemon in the anime. And no, this isn't me just making this up and forcing some existing mons into these stereotypes. This trope is so well known that I didn't even make this image. This, this is from Reddit. The second rule is really only relevant in the most recent regions, but in the themes and animals that these Pokemon are based on, they tie in heavily to the existing uh, country of inspiration that their respective regions are based on. And as such, at least the new starters feel very thematically appropriate. Like the Unova starters, they're all animals that can be found in and around New York. Otters, pigs, and snakes. And this relates to the themes that they exhibit as well, as although the Galar starters at first glance have little to nothing to do with their home region, as monkeys and chameleons aren't found natively in England, the ideas that they exhibit are very British. Scorebunny, the only one who is based on an animal from the country, represents the most popular sport there, soccer. Sobble and its evolutions are obvious homages to the trope of the British spy protagonist. And finally, Grookey represents rock and roll and the many musical talents that are famously from this country. The final design idea is one that I sort of already talked about with my last point, and that is that each trio, beyond having their own distinct personalities and being heavily related to the country of origin, they also have a unifying theme that ties them all to each other, and this is usually the most apparent in their final designs. For example, the Kalos starters are all based on fantasy RPG classes in the Knight, the Mage, and the Rogue. Anyways, <laughs> I've been rambling too much. I say all of this both to give you some ideas for your own starter Pokemon, but also to explain my thoughts behind my own trio of starters for this region. In creating the individual Pokemon, I of course exemplified Rule 1 in their personality types, in their designs. 
But the most apparent rule I followed in coming up with the animals of inspiration that I used to inspire this trio was in picking certain animals that felt very Floridian, while not making them too on the nose. Like I'm not just gonna make a water crocodile, however tempting it may be. I chose a banana slug based grass starter, possibly the most clever of my three ideas, a fire type raccoon that would start off skittish but then become fearsome, and finally a crab based on the electric blue crab that can be found on the coasts of Florida itself. As for the third rule and their unifying theme, well, I haven't come up with that yet, and I'd encourage you guys to come up with some in the comments below, as I feel like I could use some of your ideas like I've used them in the past, and I feel like this rule is the most important for creating evolutions for these Pokemon, that will be of course featured in a future video. Now that we have the ideas for our trio out of the way, let's get on to their designs. Starting in Pokedex order with the Banana Slug Grass Starter, Bananago. Bananago takes the idea of a banana slug quite literally in the way that it is a slug shaped like a banana. This concept was the strongest of the three in my opinion as I found it to be a clever play on words. I went through a few early designs that had similar features, an upturned tail that looked like the bottom of a banana, a singular antenna that resembled the stem of a banana, and two front legs that gave it the silhouette of a banana peel. And yeah, snails don't have legs, but hey, neither do snakes, and look at Snivy. I gave the off-green hue of a not-quite-ripe banana, and I think it's a good idea to evolve that color palette, no pun intended, down the ripening and rotting route with its evolutions. In its dumb, smiley expression, I try to exemplify the quirky personality type, as that seems to be a relatively rare personality type with grass starters. In fact, I chose the personality types of all of these starters based on the least used ones for each type in the main series. Bananago's name came from a portmanteau of the word banana and escargot, meaning snail in French. And yeah, I know snails and slugs aren't the same animal, but hey, again, the Pokemon company itself apparently doesn't know the difference, so if they can get away with it, so can I. Finally, its shiny is based off the color of blue java bananas. Bananago, the banana slug Pokemon. Bananago have a flexible outer shell that protects their soft bodies from attacks. Trainers who own Bananago often report a scent of rotting fruit that tends to waft from this little Pokemon's singular antenna. Though this smell is disgusting to humans, it attracts bug-type Pokemon in droves. They leave behind a rotten-smelling slime when they travel, but it is notable that the plants in the proximity of its path grow vibrant. The second starter is the fire-type starter based on my idea of a shy fire-type raccoon. This was my weakest of my initial ideas out of the three, and that fact really showed up in my creative process for creating this Pokemon. I had a really hard time in finding a good look for this Pokemon, and I guess that goes to show you that you need to have a really good idea of what you're about to draw before you draw it. Which, yeah, sounds like obvious advice, but if you've been an artist for long enough, you'll realize that you often think you know more about your idea that you're about to draw than you actually do. Drawing advice aside, this prompt most resembles a Pokemon that I had already done in the past, in the way that I explain in its dex entry that its tail is doubles as sort of a robber's bag, playing off the idea that raccoons are basically nature's little burglars. Following that thought further that gave me an idea for its evolution, paying off the warranted stereotype that wild raccoons can be very aggressive when cornered, this made me think of an idea for its evolved forms, and that the final form will be some sort of bulky rage beast akin to Typhlosion, as this Pokemon would evolve sort of like a wildfire, starting off as a seemingly harmless spark and then becoming a fiery force of nature. Finding a name for this little guy was definitely not as easy as the grass starter was, but I eventually settled on Pyroguma, being a portmanteau of pyro, meaning fire, and araguma, which is the Japanese word for raccoon. Its shiny is very simply based on the dark fur patterns that real life raccoons will often have, but in a sort of 
unintentional way, it has a double meaning. The dark gray makes it almost look like it's covered in soot, a fitting shiny for a fire type Pokemon. Pyraguma, the fire raccoon Pokemon. Shy as a rule, in the wild they only come out at night. They form small, close-knit groups that delight in the act of thieving from other Pokemon and humans alike. Although they think they are extremely stealthy, it is easy to tell whether or not your trash can has been visited by a pack of Pyraguma by the footprint marks scorched into the ground that they leave behind. What appears to be their tail is actually a natural pouch that they use to store the items that they sneak off with. This behavior translates to domesticated pyroguma, so watch your pockets should you keep one around. The final Pokemon of this video is the water type crab Pokemon based on the electric blue crab, and designed to fit into the bold personality category. Even though this idea on paper wasn't as strong as my grass starter, and is definitely not an original idea in the Pokemon world as water type crustaceans are sort of a dime a dozen, this Pokemon definitely ended up being the easiest and fastest design process out of the three. Exemplifying the bold idea was actually relatively easy, as even though crabs are skittish in real life, the massive claws and relatively relaxed if not jovial expression make this cute little Pokemon look like it can do way more damage than would be surmised at first glance. I further exaggerated this and its nonchalant expression by stylizing its antenna as a set of upturned eyebrows. But using the blue of real life electric blue crabs, this Pokemon is the most uh, alike to its real life counterpart, and the same can definitely be said about its red hued shiny. Its name Kerbubble comes from a few words, like the obvious crab and crustacean, but also cerulean, as in cerulean blue, and bubble. The last part of the name mostly came into being as adding it onto the end made uh, gave it a more natural and pleasant mouth sound than the other complicated names that I'd come up with. Kerbubble, the blue crab Pokemon. Commonly found near the shore, this little Pokemon scuttles along the beaches. The antenna atop their heads can detect changes in the weather, and massive hordes of Kerbubble will gather on the beach right before it rains. Storing seawater in their bodies, they can shoot jets out of microscopic holes at the tips of their claws at supersonic speeds. If one decides to pinch you, it will clamp down with a force greater than a hydraulic press, and it will not let go. So which one of these is your favorite? I, it's honestly too hard for me to pick. I may be biased being their creator, but I really like them all. Tell me which one you would pick in the comments below, and more importantly, leave your predictions for their evolved forms as well. Who knows, I might use one or two of your ideas. So for my few viewers who have been here for a very long time and watched season one, I'll explain the elephant in the room. Why are these new starters basically just the old ones from the New England-based Colonial region redesigned? Well, they are, and it's sort of on purpose the reason why I did this. Here's the few reasons why. The first was that when I came up with the ideas, I didn't intend to recreate that trio, but the first idea I had was the Banana Slug Pokemon. Then I thought an electric blue crab would be great, and I realized the similarities between the past region pretty quickly. But instead of trashing the first two ideas for the trio, and chose to let that original trio inspire my fire starter, uh, as all three designs felt more Floridian than they did uh, New England inspired. And I used this as a final personal reason to retcon Colonia. Now, that's a soft retcon, of course, as season as the season one videos will still remain up, as I know there's a lot of Colonial fans out there. But personally, I, I really dislike my take on a New England-inspired Pokemon region. As being from New England myself, I know firsthand that I didn't capture the feel of my own home region as well as I could have. And as such, I want to redo it someday. Again, the videos will stay up, but just know that I think about Season 1 more like a parallel universe to Seasons 2 and 3. I already have some plans to redo the series, 
that will be set uh, in the current Poke Paint universe with seasons two and three. And one of my ideas was to make a new set of starters that felt more purposefully New England inspired. And as such, this opened up these ideas for this trio to be available. A sort of long-winded uh, retcon explanation aside, I have a few more announcements before I sign off for the day. The next Pokemon video will be focused on the starter evolutions, and it will officially be airing the first weekend of September. Now I know I know what you're saying, that's so far away, but this year I will be busy in August with a smogest challenge of my own. Waiting to give both projects their proper attention, I decided to publish this video early to tide you all over for the next season that will sort of officially start in September. In the meanwhile, feel free to draw your own versions of what you think these starter Pokemon should evolve into and post them over on the Discord. Over there, we have a great community of fellow artists, many of which love sharing their own Fakemon designs and their designs that I love seeing. So I'm sure there will be many super cool designs uh, coming from this idea, some of which may inspire my official designs. But after all that, if you still can't wait until September and really, really want to get the starter videos early, you're in luck, as you can gain access to early videos by supporting the channel on Patreon. I don't usually talk about my Patreon very much, but now that it has received its new shiny upgrade, I feel better about shamelessly plugging it here. Throughout the month of August, I will be making three exclusive videos on Patreon, going over each of the starter evolutions as I create them throughout the month. Even better is these videos will be available on our base tier, the $3 early bird tier, a tier usually saved only for early viewing of regular content on the channel. But if you wish to upgrade and support me further, you can do so with the $5 itinerary tier, which gives you behind the scenes updates and monthly release schedules, or the Aesthet tier, which gives you immediate access to some of my finished art before it ever makes it into a video. Of course, just to be clear, nothing on my Patreon is exclusive, except for maybe the viewing of my production schedule. But really, everything will eventually make it onto the channel at its intended release time. So you won't miss out on anything if you're not able to support me over there. Now, of course, that all probably sounded like an ad. And, well, that's because it sort of was. But in all seriousness, for those of you who do support me over on Patreon, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And to the rest of you who made it to the end of that uh, information dump, I thank you too. But that's going to do it for this first episode of Season 3 of Pokepaint. Again, it's great to be back. I'll see you guys hopefully during Smogist, but for those of you who are just here for the Pokemon stuff, I'll see you after Smogist ends at the beginning of September for a whole new bunch of brand new Pokepaint stuff, even beyond the starter evolutions. But in the meantime, feel free to come up with names for this new region, as I haven't really come up with anything myself, and I'd love to hear your ideas. As always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to leave a like, and if you want to see more like it, then subscribe, and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.